Hey everybody, and welcome to the second part of modeling the fire pit. Now, we're going to continue modeling this uh, model, but if you haven't watched the first video, go ahead and check it out. This is how far we got uh, to modeling it, and this is what we're trying to recreate. So, now, since we already have uh, created the uh, inner portion of the fire pit, we've created this outer portion. Now, we're going to uh, go ahead and create the top here, the lid. And then gonna uh, go down to creating the legs and this uh, round structure for the entire fire pit. So let's get on with it. So I'm gonna start over here. And let's start off with uh, creating the legs so we have a base for this thing to be modeled on. If we take a look at the legs, what we can notice is that the actual leg here is completely of two elements. The first one is the base on which it stands and then the second one is this uh, actual uh, the actual leg or the shape of this leg. And this is a pretty uh, simple one to create so let's go ahead and create it. I'm gonna, I can basically create this thing in two ways. Now uh, since I know that I do have a placeholder for this thing or how big it is with uh, what we created at the beginning. I know that the, the base here should be around there, which means that I can just create one box and I can uh, just make it a size of, let's, let's say something like six by six, should work just fine, like this, and give it a bit of a height. We can try with one centimeter. And, and, and all the time I have my reference on the other side, so I'm just trying to basically guesstimate the size of this thing. With this size, I think it's going to be fine. We just need to give it a few more edges so it has that roundness. So I'm going to put an edit poly. And with a swift loop, I'm going to put one all the way down because I want this one to be sharper. And then just, well, we can go ahead with a ring selection and connect with two segments. I just want to have this thing to be pinched around about, I don't know, 80, or let's try 90. Yeah, 90 should work. One across like this as well. And now if I put a turbo smooth on, the top should be way too strong. So let's put in one more like this. All right, the bottom's fine. All right, let's see it like this now. Let's add in one more iteration. Actually, want this thing to be a bit smoother. So what I'm going to do is just move this thing a bit lower. Let's see if I move this thing over to this side. Great, that's going to work. Again, move that over to that side. Just so you know, like what I just so you can see what I'm doing. I'll show the ca uh, the cage, and as I'm moving these uh, edges apart from the corner, it's going to go round up that base to a form that we actually like. I think that this is more or less what I like. It's in tune with what I can see on my reference image over here. And I think I'm just going to keep it like this. All right. So now uh, for the leg, I'm going to do the same thing. I'll go and create a box. I can put on the auto grid if I want to, but in this case, I don't think it's going to be needed. I'm going to go from the top viewport and maybe just try to snap it from there to about there and give it some height. All right. So with this, this actually looks okay. As a starting point, we can put an edit poly on top. Now, I'm going to take this and move it all the way up to where it's supposed to end. Let's just move them both to around the middle here. There we go, here, and move it there. All right, so now I can hide this, and this is what I'm left with. I'm gonna move this thing a bit up, actually it's around here. And from what I can see right now, I've made a bit of a uh, error or a mistake when I was creating the top part because as you can see, this thing has a bit of a 
corner here and ellipse. So let's try and add that thing really fast. So for that, I'm actually going to switch over to here. Now, in here, what I'm going to do is select uh, this thing uh, and the whole ring, add in a connection. I actually want to add just two, pinch them apart like this. Okay, again, select the middle part here in the si inside, extrude it inwards like this. That's going to be good enough. And let's just add in a couple of more uh, support edges to help with holding this new form that we just created. Over here as well. One there. One there. Two more for this side. And this should work really well with the Turbo Smooth now. And there we go. We have that place where we can just have that form. All right, so we have the base, we have uh, this leg. Now we need to create the actual shape for those ridges. I can see that I have in here one, two, three middle ridges, and we have this slope in here. Now, that's not going to be hard to create. All we have to do is go in, make a ring selection, and actually, before I do that, I'm going to go select the top and the bottom uh, polygons in here and delete them because they're not going to be visible. No point in having them around. So again, select these two, go connect, and let's add in those three ridges. One, two, three segments. Now with this made like this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude these three. So I can either make it like this and extrude them inwards or outwards. Now from here, I can see that one, two, three, four is the actual number of these that I need, not three. So if I have three, uh, that would be a good number to have if I want to extrude them outwards. But actually, I want to have an inward extrusion. So we need one, two, three, four for these ridges. So again, I remove those two edges. Again, connect four segments. And now extrude, control the width of this, and go in minus, like this. Okay, so this is going to give me that look. Okay, awesome. Now, if I put a turbo smooth at the moment, this is not going to look uh, like what we are seeing over there because we still need to add in some extra support edges. So we will need to add in, select those uh, bottom ones, select uh, these corner ones over here, and just hit them with a chamfer. This chamfer will control how far that is going to go. Well, actually, let's go with just a smaller chamfer like this. Let's try it with two. See how this thing is going to work? Okay, 0 0.2 works just fine. So now with the turbo smooth on, that's going to hold that form and we have uh, the leg in here. So we have this major form. Now we just need to get this curve in here. That's not hard at all, actually. So in order to get a curve or any sort of a deformation in your geometry, what you need to do first is add in some extra edges. Now, th those are going to help us with deforming the surface. So I'm going to hit connect, and I'm going to add in maybe like, I don't know, 10 segments. This should be more than enough. Now, we only want to have that curve happening on the front side. So what I'm going to do is, from the side, I'm just going to select all the vertices on the front side. And with this selected, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a freeform deformer from here. So I'm going to use a 2x2, two two, or we can use a 3x3x3. Three by three by three. Now, if you go ahead and select just the bottom uh, vertices, you're going to see these three dots in here, right next to your edit poly. And those dots will go off or over to your FFD, which means that this FFD will now only affect the selected vertices that are below. So what this means is that now when I go in here and from the FFD, I choose the control points, I can select these ones in the middle. And when I move these backwards, 
they will give me this sort of a look. So as you can see, those FFDs are working their uh, thing and we get this sort of a bend without having to manually move all of these. So now I'm happy with how this thing looks. I want to collapse it so I can uh, either go ahead and put a new edit poly on top of this. So now we can continue working it like that. Or what I can do is just right click on this thing and go and say collapse to. If you do this thing, it's going to ask you if you want to collapse it. Yes. And just like that, this thing is now back uh, to being able to work on without having to add in a extra edit poly. Since I don't want to uh, do any more work with that uh, FFD. I'm happy with collapsing this thing. And even though it's a destructive way of working, in this case, it's just fine. So with the Turbo Smooth on, this thing looks more or less like what we're trying to recreate. So if I select both of these and give them the gray color, this is how my reference more or less looks like. So now since I have this thing all finished up, what I'm going to do is put a edit poly on top or even better yet, I can just select both of these and make them into a group. Okay. Now I know that I want to have this thing uh, as four copies around here. And for that, what I'm going to do is select this middle piece over here. I'm going to put the center to object. And now with this center to object, I'm actually going to select this group, affect the pivot only. And I'm going to align this thing to this point over here. So with a quick uh, align, I just use this. Or you can just uh, press uh, Alt A, click, and then go pivot to pivot. And this will put the pivot over there. So now when I go ahead and try to move this thing, affect pivot, there we go. Hold down shift, just uh, with the angle snap on, just copy this thing at 90 degrees and make three copies. There we go. This should give us all the legs that we need for this thing to be finished like this. All right, so we have the legs. We need to create the this piece that basically goes ahead and covers it. So for that one, what I'm going to do again is unhide my original and I can use this as a guideline as to how far this thing is supposed to go. But actually, there are a couple of ways that you can approach modeling something like this. The first one would be to use this thing, like I said, to gouge how far you're supposed to this, uh, let this thing extend to. Or the second one would be if you want to create just one of these uh, segments, like for example, if you take a look at here, if we just create one of these, then we can copy it around and do the same thing we did with the leg. So let's do that instead. So I'm going to uh, hide this again. And to create this, I'm actually going to go ahead and create a plane. Let's give it a 20 by 50. Yeah, there we go. And for length segments, I've put in three and for width segments, I've put in eight. Now, the reason for those three and eights is that when you take a look at here, all of these uh, sections in uh, here, you can see that we have three, then followed by two and two halves on one uh, on top and one on the bottom. Now, the idea here is that when we, once you have this sort of uh, geometry to start with, if I go ahead and edit poly this thing and with my option here in the modeling ribbon, I go down to poly, uh, poly modeling and generate topology with this geometry that I have in here. If I click on edge direction, this is going to give me this sort of a deal. So now here it is, we can see that we have two followed by a three. And then these two have a half on top of the top and the bottom. So that's exactly what we want to have. But now, uh, one other thing that I've noticed here on this uh, thing is that we have this uh, sort of a edge here. And this edge, like as you can see over here, is protruding upwards. So let's add that thing as well. 
So for adding in that, what, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold down uh, Shift and drag this thing with the scale upwards like this and then try to get it to a point like this. So we have something resembling this. It doesn't have to be 100% uh, correct, but for now I'm just trying to get it to follow along this path. Now, I want to add in one extra edge in here and I'm going to use that edge to get that bulge. So just a pure uh, extrude for this thing. Very simple extrude. Uh, give it a width, something like this, and that's fine. That's more than fine. All right, now uh, back to our selection of the polygons. Here we want to inset these. So inset them for a small amount. Uh, make sure it's uh, not on a group, but uh, it's inserting by polygon. And now we, here we can control how far we want this thing to uh, go to. Uh, in my case, I think I want it to be a bit thicker. Maybe something like 0 0.5 should work. Judging by what I'm seeing on the reference. Click OK and delete these. This is what we are left with. Now, I'm going to hold down uh, my border selection. Select all of these borders. Hold on shift and drag it down once just so we get a bit of a thickness to it. Now, I want this thing to affect pivot only in center to object. It's going to give me inside of the height a bit and I can put in a symmetry modifier to it. Go on the Z and this should make it go all the way down like that. All right, awesome. Now, let's add a small chamfer to this. A standard chamfer or a quad chamfer, but a very small amount, not something that harsh. All right, limited to minimum angle of let's say 25 or 50. There we go. So it doesn't uh, get this thing. All right, so. 80 should work. It's going to give us a small bevel in there, but it's not going to touch this one. Actually, for this one, I might as well go in and just manually give this thing a bit of a chamfer so it's a bit smoother. Like that. There we go. This should work. Okay, back to the chamfer. And we have this sort of a uh, geometry. And if you take a look at what we have in here, it's more or less the same look. Now, the only thing that's left is to get this thing to bend uh, across the whole thing. Now, to do that, what I'm going to do is, um, first of all, I'm going to uh, rotate this thing to 90 degrees, pull it upwards a bit. I'm going to take this now and put it in the position to maybe something like over here. Let's try to just put it so it's close enough so it's almost touching like this. That works just fine. Now we want to have this thing to bend around this thing. So like the other thing just says, just use bend angle of uh, 90 on the X axis. And here we have this bend of 90, but we need to rotate the actual geometry 45 degrees. Like this. And now let's just put this thing into position. So it's in the physically correct position. There we go. Touching. We can try just to do this thing from the bottom. Let me just go bottom. You can see better. And I might as well just hide this for now. There we go. So I can see where this thing is touching. This side is fine. This side eh, could be better. There we go. So around here should be the right size for this thing or the right shape. Put it down to here. And now I'm looking at this image. I can see that it's a bit squished. It's not this uh, big. So I can just scale it down a bit just until I get it into the right shape which I think is more or less this size. All right, so now I'm gonna put a neutral gray on this 
and I just need four more copies of it. So in order to get those copies, I'm just going to go affect the pivot only, align it to the center over here, so pivot to pivot over there, and then hit it with four copies or three copies at 90 degrees. Like this, make three copies. And this looks more or less like what I was kind of hoping to get. So unhide all. Back to hiding this thing. And we have the base here for this thing uh, finished. And now the last thing that's actually left to create is this top part over here. Let's see if we have any more images of this. And there we go. One, we have one more over here. So we can see that this thing is a net. So it's intertwined a uh, wire. So we need to create this. Now, depending on what you're going to be using this model for, uh, you can approach this thing in a couple of different approaches. The first one and the easiest one would be if you're using this thing as a asset that's going to be far in the distance. And then if you're maybe even using it inside a game engine like Unreal or Unity, you can use a texture with an opacity map to get this uh, sort of a look and nobody's going to notice. But if you're going to be using this thing to render a uh, hero shot or a render that's going to be close to the camera, you might want to actually have some geometry to uh, have this. So let's see how we create something like this. Now, this is not that hard, but it has some finicky approaches to it because when you're modeling something like this, you need to take into account how it's actually made in the real world. So I'm going to create, just to help me out for this, I'm going to isolate just this thing and I'm going to create a sphere. So let's start it as a sphere, go all the way up to here like this. All right, so let's make it a 30 flat. That's going to be cool. All right, and pull this thing up. And again, we only need half of the sphere. So edit poly this thing and remove the bottom. We don't need that. Lower this thing down and put it as a dome like this. Now the thing here is that uh, when you're looking at the image or the reference image, it's not a full sphere, but it's actually something more down this road, something like this which makes more sense. All right, so like I said, if you're gonna be using this thing inside a game engine, you might as well just uh, go in and uh, use a texture for this. But in this case, what I'm gonna show you is how to create some geometry for this. Now for the geometry wise, I'm gonna do two things. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna select my uh, border here, hold on shift and extrude one uh, edge like this. So this is gonna use, I'm gonna use this thing as a, a sort of a helper to help me uh, create what I'm trying to do now. Now, the easiest way to create something like this would be to go and hit it with a plane, something maybe like this. All right, I'm gonna use just one uh, side, so one segment on the length, and the width is basically gonna control how thick my mesh is gonna be. Let's try with 15, let's see how thick this, maybe a bit even more, 20. 30 should work. All right, that's thick enough. Put it over here like this and put it up. All right, what color is this thing? All right, edit poly. Flip it so you can see the top on the bottom uh, on here. And now, and the reason why this thing was uh, created the other way around was because I'm looking at it from the bottom, so I'm going to put it on the top. There we go. So what I want to do now is I actually want to project this thing down on this surface. But come to think of it, I'm actually going to need to add in more edges in here as well. So maybe, well, actually, I can just go down and make this thing at 30 by 30. It's going to make this thing a lot easier to uh, work with. So edit poly again, select everything and flip it again like this um, and put it down like this. And now with edit poly put on top of your plane, you can go down to your object paint. And from here, what I want to select is I'm going to go over here, actually on 
on my freeform, not the object paint, I'm going to go to uh, grid and choose on surface. And for the pick, I'm going to pick this thing underneath the sphere. So I want to use the conform brush for this. So click on the conform. And now when, when I click on conform, it was, will basically make this uh, geometry that I have selected uh, lower itself down to that sphere. So if, if I go over like this, you can see that it's slowly starting to conform to the shape of the sphere. So if I go over the edges like this, this is more or less what I'm trying to uh, get. If it's uh, a bit slow, you can just increase the full strength and this should help it move a bit uh, faster. There we go. Uh, sometimes it can be a bit finicky, but it's not a problem. As long as this thing conforms well to the surface of your sphere, this shouldn't be any issues whatsoever. So by having it like this, now I can use this geometry that I just made with the conform and then extract some splines off of it. I just want to make sure everything is fine. There we go. And in case your geometry is floating in midair and not touching your uh, underlying uh, mesh, what you need to increase is increase the offset over here and that should make it uh, fall flat on the surface. So something like this. All right, I'm actually gonna take it just a second and uh, get all of this thing to conform and I'll be right back. And there we go. Now I have this thing conformed to this uh, sphere and I'm, I'm going to isolate this. And now I'm gonna go ahead and delete the things that I don't really need, which is gonna be, if I take a look at it from the top, you can not see that this thing has been deformed at all because it's still keeping that same shape. But from here, I can actually see that I have some uh, polygons that I don't really need. Also, instead of uh, deleting this uh, geometry what I can do is just make it uh, so I have a ring then a loop and then out of this what I can do is simply go in and extract a shape make it a linear that's fine now this thing I can go in here and just delete these vertices that I don't really need don't need these either. So it's your choice. You can either uh, choose to delete the, uh, the vertices or you can choose to delete the polygons that you don't really need. In this case, I think it's going to be easier just to come in here and delete these uh, vertices that I don't really want. Just make sure you don't delete something that you will actually need. So let's take it in like these, delete this. Uh, the ones, these ones on the corners, that will not actually be needed at all. There we go. A couple more, and we'll be golden. All right. All right, delete this and anti-isolate. Awesome, so we have this. Now, I can take the underlying geometry that I just created. I'm gonna hide that one. I'm gonna hide this one as well. Well, actually, before I, no, I'm gonna hide this. And this is what I'm left with. As you can see, at the moment, I've probably deleted some uh, these edges that I wasn't really supposed to, but that's not a problem. I can just select these, move them down a bit because there are vertices, and I can uh, allow myself to do this only because I know that on the bottom here 
there is a ribbon going across that's going to cover up any screw-ups that we m make while we're creating this uh, mesh. Now, once we do this, and we spend a bit more time to make sure that uh, our mesh is clean, especially for the edges, like the corners of this thing. So we make sure that this thing uh, covers up uh, well. What we can do is just hold on shift and rotate this thing one more time at 90 degrees like this. And that's going to give me a copy of it. As so. so I have this sort of a uh, build it. On top of it i want to have a smaller thickness to so maybe like 0 0.2 same thing over here 0 0.2 and now depending on how really well you want to cover this what you can do is you can go in and uh, select uh, the vertices S uh, select one skip one select one skip one and move the uh, move one of them down and then select this one make sure that this thing is on top of it and it's going to look like it's intertwined like that so i'm gonna make this thing gray again that's one way and when you take a look at here you can see that you have these extended wires that's actually the same thing as it is on the actual model when it gets to the the corners the wires do get a bit stretched out now, uh, one more thing that we can do, like I said, uh, in here is I'm going to hide this uh, projected dome. And on this one, I'm actually going to go in, delete this. And now with this ribbon over here, I can use this to cover up, like I said, uh, this bottom here, this thing. We can extract it out from here. So go ahead and just uh, create or detach this as a clone. That's fine. And de-isolate. Give it a shell. Give it an outer shell. And scale it out a bit like this until it gets to the corner here hide this move it down all right you get hidden as well all right edit poly get the ring a loop and a chamfer They should work just fine. All right, back to having this thing as a gray. And we can even put a turbo smooth on it if you want to have that thing like this. And with that, we have our cover here for our uh, fireplace. And the last thing we can add is just uh, these two ribbons on top. And those are easy. We can just uh, reuse the projected geometry from here. So just uh, get in here, select this middle one as it is, uh, chamfer it like this. This is one centimeter. That's fine. Just select it, control click. We don't want the two on the corners. So make this thing detach as a clone. That's fine. And there we go. Let's make sure. Yep. I want to hide this. And ND isolate. All right. So for this one, again, put a shell. Do the same thing we did with the previous one. Or that one on top. Put it up. Maybe even scale it out a bit. Like, so it's touching on the corners. That's fine. And we need one more going the other way around. Although I think this one needs to be a bit thinner. 0.2 should work. Hold on shift. 90 degrees. That's going to hide that. Although first I might as well just uh, add in a turbo smooth with a few 
changes in here. So a few chamfers. Uh, hit it with a loop, chamfer. Very small amount. Let's try 0 0.3. That's going to work. Turbo smooth. That's fine. I can uh, cut out the, the caps, but it's really not visible, so it's not a big deal here. We have one more like this. Select them both. Give them a gray color, so I know it's finished. Remove this, or just hide it for now, and boom, we have this thing uh, finished. And the only thing that we can add in is just this uh, cone on top, but it's not really a, something that you guys don't know how to do, so yeah. Anyways, with this, we're basically finished with this model. And even though it took a bit longer than the usual videos, I do hope you guys had fun and you managed to learn something new from this video. If you'd like to support me, uh, you can click the join button and the direct links will be in the description below. And the most helpful thing you can do is always click the like and subscribe buttons and comment on the video uh, in below. And as always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.